about two minutes tonight at home. And this is Chair, two minutes, two minutes to check.
It's important to say here, actually, that it's a high council <coughs> approach to this. And uh, they must look at some outcomes. And by looking at it from an outcome perspective, we've been able to look at it sort of strategically and break down a sort of service, you know, service that we're going to different directions and look more across the piece. And the way we've done that is by looking across and grouping services uh, against those outcomes. And just to sort of provide um, actually a quick sort of summary, there's three main outcomes themes that have been um, identified. And uh, Kevin in the middle will talk about the outcome themes that are relevant to this community. So we have community enabled services, enabling services, which is the back office uh, and support services, and also specialist and targeted services. And what we're doing through this group people's process is for each of the committees, each of the committees have a specific look at those different outcomes that are relevant to each of those committees. Just to remind you of financial context, but, um, significant savings, uh, some £57 million pounds have already been agreed, and they are, um, the impact of those, the majority of those, is phased over the <coughs> Furthermore, a minimum of sort of 45 million pounds of new savings is required over the next two financial years in 2017. And on top of that, um, our early sort of forecasts, and they are kind of early at this stage, but they also, uh, those projections indicate that there are 25 million pounds of savings will be in there by 2018. <coughs> and the important po uh, point to make at this point is that in terms of the serving and taking that have already been made, We've tracked back across all the council services and departments and broadly they've been equally delivered on a pro rata basis across the services and departments. Obviously we're doing this within the context of the core growth plan and uh, that's the basic framework. So in reviewing all those service activities and, and, and taking this program forward, it's very much linked back to the three key priorities that we have in terms of tackling health inequalities and narrowing the gap between our richest and poorest communities. Protecting the vulnerable, making sure people are safe and feel safe, and also driving the economic growth. And so they are you know, in the forefront of mind when we see that those kind of services are being reviewed and proposed what's being developed. Also, in terms of the policy context, it's important to reiterate uh, the um, sort of principles that the leadership has been keen to uh, promote in terms of taking forward this work. And that is to spend less on uh, the cost of that can run the council, but the broader shoulders should bear the greatest burden. And also that um, we should seek to mitigate as far as possible the impact uh, of savings on frontline services. So I mentioned that before just briefly that we've got three main outcome headings, but we've also been doing this work and taking a strategic overview. We've been able to actually kind of like almost take a helicopter view of everything and identify where there actually are some options that are common across all services. And so we want to identify some council-wide options or cross-country options which are also being taken forward and being developed as we speak. So just to sort of just do a quick overview of those before I hand over to Kevin, and uh, the council-wide options include uh, charging and income collection and making sure the council has efficient and effective processes for collecting the income. Obviously, commissioning and procuring and contracting is so much that we, uh, we source externally and we'll continue to do that. And so it's about reviewing all of the contracts to ensure we get the best value. Also, uh, a key theme that's come across <coughs> the service review process has been that almost all council services have their front door or have been, uh, their access points to service users and the public. And so it's important that we take a kind of strategic view of reshaping that to full context. And making sure that services, uh, that access to services is the most appropriate channel is being used and most cost effective. And that information advice and guidance is most effectively targeted for those who really need it. Uh, and the other key uh, options that have a, a, a cross cutting nature are uh, an efficient approach to transactions, uh, making sure that administration, that's very much the back office administration, is streamlined and we get the most efficient, efficient process for them. Also flexible and mobile working, ensuring the workforce can work as flexibly as possible and efficiently uh, as they can out in the field as well as in the office. Getting the most out of our assets and our asset management strategy and um, taking that forward. And also out of our provision, 
Again, this has been one of the value, part of the value of the things strategically seen across all services where we're in that well operation and looking at opportunities to join those uh, services up in a single point or a multifunctional division that deals with all that and values activities. So I'll hand over to Kevin to talk a little bit more about the uh, community initial what I'm just going to talk to you quickly this evening um, is first of all what's involved in the neighbourhood team, what's coming out so far in terms of, in terms of project, what the next steps are, and really if we need you to, to come up with to discuss a few key questions that we need to consider about, about how we're going to build the old street in Jordan and Jordan September. I'm not going to go through them in a huge amount of detail, get the information on the percent because most of them are all a bit massive and pieces of it. But just quickly working through. Um, in terms of community neighbourhood services, now the first thing is to say is that what we're not proposing, we might quickly mention the earlier on that we're looking at services based on enabling services, which are all your back office support type services. We are looking at specialist departments, which are primarily services that are more delivered through adults and children, social care, and community neighbourhood services. We're not proposing that as any kind of council structure going forward. All that is is that we've gone through and gone into minute levels of detail and we've given 81 different as you can imagine, it's a huge amount of data to ask the client to try and get into it. It's a huge amount of information to try and make cross government and strategic decisions and proposals based on that. That's really driving the level. What we're trying to do is put them together into a theme that makes sense, that actually people will understand, and actually is you're able to actually look at services as a whole and to look at things that various services are doing similar things. We've got similar outcomes, the processes might be quite similar, and look to see where we can go in the future. So that, that, was the, that was the theory behind putting these services in the way we've done. Primarily within the community and neighbourhoods, you've got five distinct blocks, which are looking after the environment, so things along the lines of highways, traffic, transport, waste. And regulation and enforcement, which is built with control development management, providing the health, housing standards, trade standards, licensing elements of licensing. Um, neighbourhood services, which is quite a bit wider, so things like libraries, lifelong family lake, linen, parks, sports, sports clubs, and youth and life. So that's a big, that's a big, big a much, much wider, wider service block here. We've also got cultural services, which is obviously the smaller pavilion, but the wider cultural and uh, heritage office in the museum of that. Uh, and driving economic growth, which is our, which is a combination of a few things really, but primarily the support we get to indigenous businesses, business stories based here, to invest well. Um, it's about our economic strategy in terms of encouraging in with investment and helping businesses grow on a, on a larger scale. It's about a uh, forward plan, but it's also about our destination market functions as well, where we're looking at uh, developing the tourism market. So that is, uh, that's, uh, uh, if you like, the end of the services that, that we look at in this theme of the option for we put together. What we're putting in papers um, is, as we are working through all of the services in these papers, and as we are starting to build uh, new structures, and as we are starting to put together um, options for savings, within the papers, Two things really. The first thing is um, principles, um, which is really well, just a set of principles that are being used by officers as we're trying to present these budget proposals. And the second bit is the major options themselves, just a, a broad idea of what's going to come forward. Same two principles briefly. Um, increasing income in this area isn't, isn't it, it is increasing income, but it's not about charging, it's not being about charging more, particularly in, in, in investment. What it's about really is looking at where we are providing services. There are a whole range of different organisations and partners, making sure that we're not subsidising the really good industry. It's about making sure that we do everything in, in, in its most efficient and effective way as possible, and make sure that everything we do is cost back full cost recovery, whatever charges for. And um, being more efficient, um, which is one of the key themes right like the way to help all future council projects, really, and why this is being driven through a whole council approach is that looking, is that making sure that we don't follow the style of approach anymore. Sure that we truly look the right way at our service boundaries, which this is, I suppose, a, a big step towards in terms of looking at services on a key market basis rather than just high residence service, high residence building, high residence department. We're looking right way across all the boundaries here. The last couple are about um, targeted resources. So that's mainly about uh, getting uh, constituency committees particularly uh, to have much more of an input and there's much more to say about how resources are actually involved in that strategy. New models of delivery principle is about really looking at more 
innovative and not, and more positive ways of, of, of delivering services. So we, you're going to be getting options coming forward out in June September that really are all those principles for our public and all the services that I mentioned that I mentioned earlier on. And I'll get to the second um, We have got a few emerging options that we've given you brief details of in the debate at the moment. Now they're here and still still fit up uh, work up and they will carry on being work up so we've got fully work up business places on when we want to publish uh, on them in early September. Um, I won't go through them more than any kind of detail because I have to say that's the end of the thing for them. But making sure that we are providing services that get the legal requirements and make sure that they are providing all the way the legal requirements that actually identify that we actually know exactly what we're doing in that area. Um, making sure that we put the right kind of investment in technology to make sure that people can actually work a little bit more efficiently. You don't have to go back to the office to really work. If people work in the field, they should be able to work in the field properly. So we don't have to be carrying on that. It's tied in quite closely to do with the asset strategy, but making sure really that we've got the right kind of technology and the right kind of hands so that we, our staff can actually work as efficiently as possible. Um, making sure, and it ties back to my point earlier on about charging and public collection, is that where that we have, there is an opportunity to actually generate income and there is an attractive opportunity to be more commercial that we've got the right culture in place and the right skills in place to actually capitalise on that and make sure that works. Um, the top one is about really, it's about making sure that we are not running all sorts of different processes that they're very similar to different processes and very across different services. A lot of not, an awful lot of the time our processes are thrown through time and through, through various, through various um, requirements from us from government about looking at them as, as right away across the entire council and making sure that we identify where we're doing things very, very similar things across two different teams where we're doing that and that just delete all the information right away across the council. Um, the next one really is that we've got an awful lot of different functions that we're, whereby they're offered the state standpoint services but the skill set, the knowledge the, and the experience required to do that job is quite similar right away across. So it's where we can create more generic roles, which are staying together to and have to basically have more multi-skilled and multi um, and multi-faceted department <coughs> teams, which <coughs> in the state of the world really gets a lot of input from the government. You're not gonna have no need to have two or three different offices all running at the same time. So that that's really the theory behind it. And again, maximize as much as possible the the, the local flow to all the other functions. So we'll you quickly through the time scales over the over the next few months. Obviously the first one is what we're doing now. And um, we've gone to the um, we asked in the last of the four committees that asked to the papers. We took um, all the papers to coordinate the committee at the end of July. We've done transformation of resources and found these over the past couple of weeks. Um, what we'll ask you in the second is to look through a series of just a short series of questions, really for the committee to discuss and for yourself chair to decide really how you best want to take this forward into the next phase in September. Um, in September, all of the emerging options that I just got with plus quite a lot more on the side will be published outside some, some detailed uh, business cases. But public for service user and staff consultation. Um, at that point as well, we'll ask yourselves and we'll also ask uh, the constituency committees to work with those options and kind of conduct some key decisions with respect to them. So to feed in, feed into the consultation process but also to In November, um, then we will come back with the feedback that we've received from, um, from, from staff, from public, from people who use the services, everyone in the city comes across and we'll do that right the way across the post, to get to the city so it's to a full screen of the And at that point, we'll, uh, if again, it's a feed the other last question to us in terms of the options themselves, but also in terms of the public of the consultation feedback that we have before we, before we make any kind of recommendation.
Well, the, the principles that I've talked talk is that any paper that I actually in the presentation as well, to members of more than obviously provide views on those. Are there other areas of need that we're not looking at at the moment? Are we missing anything there? Should we actually do the anything? Should we add anything? What, what, just generally, what your views on the content of the initial uh, position papers? Now, I know we have a huge amount of details in the moment, and I've been making quite a few of this, which is absolutely right. Um, that will be coming in September, but if there's anything we need to do, I think that we want to make that, that this time, I would say that we can't do it. But the next two questions is, in September, we'll see three coaches options for the publishers, covering every committee of the service. Um, would the committee rather have um, a formal meeting like this, to consider those options? Would, be, would you rather have set up um, four more detailed workshops? Uh, which is the first question. The second question is, would you like, would you like, would you like us to nominate and us to invite additional people from other organisations and anywhere that you think that might be helpful to actually come along and act as our scope of work with members of the committee? That was all we wanted to say.
was scared of dealing with the maths of the legislative centres, which had cost them an arm and a leg. We do need to actually sit down now and say we need to do something about it. Whether we uh, 